Hello, one more time, grade 11s. We're getting to the end of things here for this unit. Only the most complicated topic to go. Awesome. We're talking about collision detection here. So I left my project in this state from last time, where Mario, I can hit his head there, and he fits in nicely on this um, coin block down below, and he can jump on these different platforms. And man, it's not perfect, but boy, the, uh, the way Mario is able to interact with these things feels pretty good, and we're on our way to a more complete feel for our game's interaction. So how do we get these different collision detection things up and running? Well, the sad news for you is that it's not very easy. I have to have different code detecting bottom down collisions. So, well, I guess in this case, it'd be Mario detecting that there's something above him and behaving in some way. Different code for Mario looking to his left for how he interacts, bumping into something sideways like that. Different code to the right and different code downwards. So there's four different blocks of code that I have to create for each different direction. Luckily, the basic strategy for each is very similar. We just have to be able to deal with the unique circumstances of each way. And of course, with many things in coding, there's many different layers of complexity we can do to accomplish this. You'll notice that it's definitely not perfectly implemented just yet. This would not be considered a, a great final product. But for where we're at in our learning, I think this current stage I'll show you will suffice. Also note that our enemy isn't a very in intelligent collision detection just yet. It's pretty rudimentary. And one of your challenge tasks will be to try and make him behave more akin to Mario with some bit more intelligence going on there. But that's for something for that on the road. Let's take a peek at the notes for this section. I want to talk you through a couple things here. So... Here's the basic idea that we're following. We're using the Greenfoot method, get object at offset. One thing that I want to remind you of, the Greenfoot API, we're gonna go under our actor class. It's always a good idea to review the details of our API when we have a new method or one that we haven't used as much to kind of get a sense of what it's asking for. So I said here in my notes, we're going to look at get object at offset. get one object. I should edit that because get one object at offset. That is definitely, there we go. Um, I mixed up my methods in my head when I wrote the PowerPoint notes. It's good for us to keep in mind. So we have two options here, get objects at offset, multiple objects, or get one object at offset. And we want the one object here because what we're looking for is to try and detect when there's one platform we're coming into contact with. What does one platform count as? Well, each of these individual chunks here is considered one platform. Move them to the position there, but when we're down here, Mario is thinking about them one at a time. He's not gonna think about them all as a big clump of platforms. Each time he gets near one, he wants to consider them for the unique platform that he's interacting with. On the whole, he's gonna interact with them just fine but it allows us to make our code a lot more generalized when we just interact with things one at a time. And so one object is going to be what we want to be working with. So let's click on this method here. We need three pieces of information. We need dx, which is a fancy way of saying a change in x. dy, change in y, and then an actual class that we're looking to detect. And in this case, that's gonna be, if I pop back over here to our code, my blind, there we go, our platform class that generalizes for all the other types. So when I get this up and running for the platform class, it'll be able to make Mario work with this collision detection for all the different types. Let me prove it to you. Here's a horizontal um, pipe and he interacts with it just fine because it's generalized to the platform class and that hierarchy saves us having to code in separate rules for all these different things, which is super helpful for this section. So offset means how far away is it from some part of the object? And here's what we need to be aware of. When we're asked for an object at offset, what are we asking? Well, how many units away from the center of our object? My drawing might not be perfectly center here, but Greenfoot's gonna know the exact center of the object and say, how far from the very middle are these things that I'm looking for? So that you'll see on the x-axis here, I have this line that this right-hand side shows the exact center, and then the farthest point of it would be 
the offset to the very edge of our image. The same thing for the vertical line. This is at the center. The very bottom of this would be offset by, well, what is the amount? On the x, it's half of the image's width. On the y, it's half of the image's height. That's how far each of these points are offset. So if we consider the very bottom corner of our Mario, let's say if I wanted to detect the bottom corner, where would that be? Well, it would be offset half of his width and half of his height. For now, we're going to keep it a little simpler. We're just going to worry about the actual side points along the way, each of the four different kind of central areas. So where is this bottom central point? Well, it has the same x value as the original center of Mario, which is helpful, but the y value is offset by half of Mario's height. Notice the y away or the y offset is half of Mario's height. Hmm. This value in this context should be positive because it's lower than Mario's center. But if we're checking for the head, then this should be a negative number because we want it to be thinking about upwards in the y direction. So with that in mind, let's take a peek at some code here. We're going to look at specifically at bottom checker, looking at Mario's feet, the scenario where we're right here. Y away, the offset is height divided by 2. All right, let's read through this. Note here that it says in my code, you're actually going to look at left, right, and top collision. You have to do them all separately, but the basic principles are the same. First of all, we need to grab information about Mario's dimensions to process the collisions. I want to get his height so that I know the height from the current image. And if I need to worry about his width, I'll add it in later. But for this particular one, remember that I told you when we're talking about the middle point, the x is the same as the center. So I don't have to worry about his width. I automatically know the x will be fine. But the height, I have to get some information. And what is that distance that I'm going to be offsetting? It's half of his height. Now here's where things get a little bit funky. I'm going to be looking for an actor. I'm going to call this actor for now the ground. So I'm looking for a chunk of my world that I might be landing on. It could be this chunk, could be this chunk, could be this chunk. I'm looking for a chunk. How am I going to look for it? I'm going to get one object at offset. I'm looking for a platform class whereabouts x, well, no offset from my x value because it's right below where my center is. But my y, I want it to be a positive y distance away, down half of the height. What is this, oops, what is this particular method doing? It's looking at right where my mouse is at the bottom, right down at the very bottom part between his feet. Is there a platform in that area, on that point? All right, moving on. If that actor is null, meaning we haven't found one yet. If I'm ever in the air right now, Mario would re return actor is null because there's no platform beneath him. But if I was to put this block here, right, like so, that would return an actual object now because it would detect that right between his feet there is an actor of platformer type class or platform class. So that would be null. This would not be null. Not nothing. If there is no ground yet, that means grounded is false. That means I'm not on the ground yet. Otherwise, if ground has gained a value, which means if it found that there actually was a platform beneath Mario's feet, grounded is true, and then I'm going to run some other piece of code to actually make sure Mario ends up in the right place. I call it move to ground, and note that I send along with me to that method the actual actor, the platform that I found, which is the piece that was beneath it. I'm sending this to the method to be processed. All right. In the second method, I'm going to be controlling Mario's interactions with platforms below him so the interactions are smooth and glitchless. It also sets relevant triggers for jumping and animating as well. There's a lot going on in this. Let me describe it to you briefly. 
if I just allowed Mario to detect there was something beneath him, he would go, okay, I found something awesome, and then he'd fall right through it. I actually have to set some limitations for where he can move. Think about previously when we had the floating Mario, where we said, below a certain Y value, don't let Mario move anymore. Automatically teleport him back there so that he looks like he's walking on an invisible wall. Well, in that case, we actually limited where he was moving and we set his location after the fact. We're going to do something similar here, and that's what we do in this method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at whatever my platform is. In my project, they're all pretty similar size so far, but this will generalize to any different size. Actually, this is a great example of our horizontal pipe because its size is different. So it has to be able to adapt to its particular situation. So it's going to find out the information it needs. It's first going to look, what is the height of the ground that I'm landing on? And it's going to say, hey, ground, the platform I'm looking at, let's get the height of it and store it in this integer. And then I'm going to take a look at what is the top layer of that ground object. I'm going to call it the new Y. Listen carefully as I talk you through this. Ground.get Y. It's going to get the Y location of the middle of that ground object. Right in the very center. That's the Y value. However, I don't want Mario standing on the middle. I want him standing on the top. So I have to shift the Y value up by half of its height. I am going to shift upwards. Remember for Y, negative is upwards. The ground height plus I am going to get image, get height, divided by 2. So I am going to be getting the Y location and I'm going to be shifting it so that Mario stands right on the very top of the surface. Now that I have the new Y location he, could, he should be at, Mario's location is going to be set to whatever his current X is. I don't want him teleporting sideways, but I'm going to force him to be staying still on the new Y. This is the surface of the object, and I'm forcing Mario to be there. Down here, I have some var variables that in my code are required. I set grounded true. That allows him to jump. Jump ready allows him to jump, and air control equals true. This is part of my solution to letting go of spacebar and him being able to stop his jump early. You might have to read through my code a little bit more to see where these pop up. They're not a part of the, uh, the actual collision detection, but they're required for some other logic involved. So kind of put those to the side for now. What's going on in here? One more time. Mario is being forced to stay on top of this box, not fall into it, not fall through it. It's whenever he's above it, make sure he's on it. Not floating, not inside, but right on it. So if I play, run with Mario, every time I'm over top of a new platform, it's recalculating this platform. What is its height? Half of its height above it is where I want Mario to be forced to remain. And he's not allowed to go anywhere lower than that. And so that allows him to collide with it, but not actually merge with it or pass through it. The logic for doing so from the sides and for the top are very similar, except that in those cases, instead of looking down between his feet, for above, I look at the point above his head. For the left, I look at the point to his left over here, which is the same Y value as offset, but negative half of the width. And for the right over here, the same Y offset, but positive half of the width. So in our code, we have uh, some different checks in place. I'll just point them out to you really quick here. I start with the bottom checker in mind. This takes a look at below Mario for if there's a platform. If there isn't, I'm in the air. If there is, then I force him to be on the ground properly, just like I showed you. Or maybe there's a platform above. I have to look above Mario's head to see if there's something there. If there is a ceiling, if it's not null, if there is one, I want to stop Mario in place. And then I want to run a method called the bop head here, but you can call it anything else if you want, uh, control head or something, 
then I'm going to make sure that his position never actually goes into that. It's stopped, and his location is set to the new Y, this time based off of the bottom of the box instead of the top of the box. Right walls and left walls both behave similarly. We take a look to the left, or sorry, to the right and to the left of Mario, and then we see, oh, if there's a wall there, then stop Mario based on the right wall rules. Same thing with left. If there is a left wall there, stop Mario from going into the left part of the wall. And that's that. This generalized approach can be adapted to lots of different actors. You could make your Koopa follow something similar or any other actor that you create. You just have to keep in mind um, any of the unique elements of those actors that might have to be taken into account in terms of how you might adapt things. So, for example, the way that you name something, this would no longer be Mario Height. You might want to consider changing the names of it. But a lot of the other implementation, other than some of the specialized triggers, might be more familiar or more similar than you might first imagine. And if you can get that up and running, I'll give you some credit for that. Okay, that was a lot, but we got some really important implementation in place. The ability to get Mario bash in his head, landing on his feet, a much more interesting world. Now we can consider if I remove some of these blocks, oh, I can't do that when I'm running the game, my Mario can fall to his death. I haven't implemented that here, but you can implement in your game Mario falling to his death so that your level ends. In the next very short video, I'm going to talk about your final project, what the expectations are in a bit more detail, but please make sure you understand what I did in the code here. It's really important for this section and ask me if you need a hand. Thanks for listening.